Hello YouTube. Recently, I made a video responding to another fitness YouTuber who claimed that people who live for aesthetics are idiots because according to him, the only valid reason to train and to lift weights is to be functional. And it wasn't the first time I had uh, some issues with the functional training crowd because uh, I think a year ago, I also made a video where I attempted to discuss the very concept of what it meant for a lift to be functional. And I came to the conclusion that it didn't mean much, meaning that most lifts were functional by nature. But in both these videos, I was never truly able to get to the core of why this trend of functional training bothers me so much. Until a certain channel by the name of Movement by David popped up in my recommendations. And I had never heard of him before, and no one that I know in fitness circles I've heard of him before either. He's a complete unknown. But one of his titles actually caught my attention because he named one of his videos How I'm Skinny But Strong. And that is very interesting because he's indeed very skinny. You can see that in the thumbnail. So I was wondering how strong he would really be, right? And it's only a three minute long video. You can go check it out if you want. But it was enough time for me to finally realize why I dislike functional training so much and why the people who claim to train for function get under my skin. You know, when something bothers you in life, I always believe personally that you need to dive deep because there's some truth in it. If something makes you angry or upsets you, you must learn why you don't want to be controlled by that emotion. And that's exactly what I did. And I'm coming to you with my findings. My findings are that since I'm someone who likes honesty, when I'm faced with people who are dishonest in their practice, it makes me upset. And I have found that people who promote functional training do so in a way that is, in my opinion, disingenuous and that will most likely lead to their audience spinning their wheels and getting no result. So my goal today isn't to destroy functional training because it's not going anywhere or even to call out David because uh, you know how sometimes it's funny how life works. You watch someone's video and you disagree with them on ideology or theory, but the person that they are you like, yeah, I'm starting to become a fanboy for that guy because he's actually quite charismatic. Uh, I'm just doing this entire thing because if you are the type of person who's also going to get sucked in by his persona and his methods of training, I want to save you years. I want to make sure you're not going to just waste your efforts doing something that is not going to get the results that you want. In a sense, I want to prevent you from turning into a skinny functional nerd. Now, the reason why I call David a nerd isn't to insult him because I personally consider myself to be a nerd as well. I love anime, I love training to a point where it is getting to an obsession status, right? It's all I think about and that's why I have a fitness channel, of course. So that's not the issue at all. The fact that he's passionate about what he does in his training style is actually great. And he clearly has spent a lot of time optimizing every parameter of it. So when it comes to the things that he's good at, he gives good advice. But I believe that that type of enthusiasm can become an issue because it usually tends to turn into charisma and people, especially young people, are then lured to that charisma even though it might be against their best interest. And you see that with uh, the amount of people that follow David. He has 2 million subs on YouTube out of fucking nowhere. I had never heard of the guy before and many more on TikTok. And I think the reason why I didn't know who he was and why none of my peers knew is because he's not really a fitness channel. And we'll get back to that because it's, it's sort of the problem with functional fitness. But I think it would be quite dismissive and also disingenuous to claim that David only got so popular because of the trick of the algorithm. That is not true at all. There's actually a second reason, and that is the inherent nature of functional training. Functional training has three major advantages over any other style. The very first one is that it usually relies on body weight movements, meaning it's super accessible. You don't need a gym, you don't need equipment, you can literally start right now, and you can even follow along, which is why People on TikTok, for example, like to film themselves doing David's uh, routines and then they post it tagging him. That also helps with popularity. That's something you cannot fucking do with bodybuilding. I'm not going to film myself doing like pull-ups and you're going to do pull-ups as I do pull-ups. It would be ridiculous. So that's one. The second one is that it's not intimidating at all because the movements you start with are super easy and they tend to be natural patterns of the human body. Even though, yes, you would never actually do that in real life, but you can just drop down and do them. No one is going to be intimidated by that. 
But if I tell you, hey, go to a gym with strangers that might judge you, then get to a bench and load the bar and then do the movement correctly, that's a little bit more scary. And that is why many people are afraid to go to the gym. With functional training, there's actually no problem. That is not a factor. And then the third one is that it's much more relaxed. Because again, if I put you on a weight training routine, you're going to have to follow rep ranges, weight on the bar, progression schemes. Wow, that's so much to take into account. And I'm not making fun of people and noobs here. I actually believe that. Plate map, for example, is a gatekeeper. Because if I say to someone who knows how to lift, put 205 on the bar, they know it's a 45 and then a 35. But if you don't know that, now you have to think about it. It's not something that you actually want to do. It's stressful. However, with functional training, that is not the case at all. You follow goals that are very easy to put in place and you can do them right now, right here at home. And these are the reasons why functional training is what I believe to be the ultimate fitness routine for beginners, for people who have never trained before, because anyone can do it. Sedentary people can do it. Old people can do it. People who've never trained can do it. And I know that certain types of training like powerlifting claim to be that, but they're not that because you still need a gym, you need equipment, you need, how to, you need to know how to make the movements work, etc., etc. With functional fitness, it's actually true. And this is why I think it is a great achievement that must be celebrated that functional fitness has managed to get people to move more. In a sense, it's fulfilling a role and a niche that bodybuilding and powerlifting never managed to fill, which is to hit a mainstream audience of people who don't want to be Ronnie Coleman, who don't want to become super fucking strong. They just want the health benefits that come with physical activity, and that is that. However, and you saw it coming based on the title, that is where this popularity turns into a negative because when you do functional fitness, exercising becomes the goal of the practice. You move in order to be able to move. And this is why I've always found the name functional fitness to be hilarious and ironic because oftentimes you're developing a function for the sake of getting better at that function, if not just to do the function, which has almost no application to real life. And of course, you could disagree with me and tell me, well, Doing pull-ups is going to make me overall stronger. I don't disagree with that at all. Of course, it, it will. It might even improve longevity, etc. But where I disagree is in the idea that you getting super performant at pull-ups will like, save your life one day. These types of channels keep claiming stuff like this, like, oh, you one day you will be hanging from a bridge and pull-ups will sell, save you. Really? I mean, if that happens, yes, doing a pull-up will save your life. But what is the chance of that happening? And even if that happens, you only need to do one pull-up and not just any pull-up, a muscle up on the side to be able to actually save your ass. It always struck me as something silly. Why do you need to use these death or life scenarios to be able to justify training pull-ups? Couldn't you just say you want to do pull-ups because they're fun? They're not more functional than anything else. Then you have something like a bear crawl that is a favorite of people who train for function. What is the function that is going to be applicable in your life? When do you crawl on the floor? Uh, if, if there's like World War III that breaks out and you have to escape enemy territory, I don't think it's going to be applicable. What, I, what is applicable, however, is the fact that the barrel crawl is going to train your core, going to train your upper back and your shoulders. That is the function of the barrel crawl, is that it makes you ultimately stronger at movements that might not be the crawl in and out of itself. And that is fine. Again, I don't think that there is anything wrong with that. Even though the movements that I just cited don't apply to your day-to-day -day life, they still have the function of making you a better, more mobile, and stronger human beings. But then you have to actually recognize that the function of these movements is not the main function, but the attributes that they bring you through the motion that you train. And that is a distinction that I think is essential, because once you realize that, you realize also that this very same characteristic applies to literally every single resistance training exercise. Meaning that as long as you're engaging the muscles and getting the joints to actually activate the muscles, you're doing functional training because you're training the function of the muscle and you're also getting better at that movement. And this, by the way, also applies to hypertrophy training. There's this idea floating around that functional training is somehow the antithesis of bodybuilding because bodybuilding has no function, but bodybuilding is trained directly through function. When you do a curl, for example, what you train is the function of the bicep, which is the ability to flex and supinate the forearm. How else are you supposed to train the bicep if not through its function? Meaning that it doesn't matter if your goal is only to get it bigger. 
at the end of the day, you're still getting better at the function, so it is functional. But the beauty of bodybuilding is that it doesn't stop there, because you also get a secondary function, which is aesthetics. Because yes, hypertrophy is quite literally the ability to get bigger and stronger after stress is incurred. So, based on this, we see that everyone that trains for bodybuilding is also doing functional training. But does that mean that anyone who trains for function is also bodybuilding? An interesting question. And this is when we finally get back to David and to the question of strength. Because in the video that caught my eye, David claimed that he was very skinny but strong. And of course, I wanted proof. If you tell me I'm strong, I want to see you be strong. So I actually checked out the video. And what I saw in the video was him doing a few push-ups him doing a few pistol squats, a few pull-ups, a 60-pound overhand press, and two handstand push-ups. Now, maybe you are impressed by these numbers or by these feet, but as someone like me, who has been following powerlifting, street workouts, calisthenic competitions, and strongman for 10 years, I can only say that none of these feats demonstrate strength at all. Actually, they're all super fucking weak, and something I would expect pretty much anyone to be able to do after a year in the gym especially considering that the guy only weighs around 140 pounds. And as you might or might not know, the lighter you are, the easier calisthenic movements become. And I don't say that to humiliate the guy. It's not uh, an attack against his ego or his results. It's just factual. The guy is not strong. So when he makes a video saying, I'm skinny but strong, I agree with the first part. He is skinny, but he is not strong at all. There are people that are his weight, that can squat like 400 pounds, that can bench 250, that can overhead press their body weight for reps. So he is really, really weak compared to this level. And I know what you might post in the comments right now. You might tell me, dude, you're not getting it. He's saying that he's strong compared to the average person, not compared to a bodybuilder or a powerlifter. And that's the issue because there's clearly a level of semantic dissonance here. Yes, David is strong compared to the average untrained guy, but anyone who has been spending any amount of time in the gym or even doing body weight is stronger than the average guy. Since when have we started to define ourselves and our value in relation to people who are more than mediocre? What type of nonsense is that? Fitness is supposed to be the elevation of standards, not the lowering of standards. And that is really when my issue is because when we look at this and the fact that, yes, someone who trains for function can claim to be strong with these numbers, we see that one is ridiculously weak compared to anyone who trains for any other type of strength sport or bodybuilding. And to that, it doesn't seem to be an issue within the sphere of functional fitness because functional training is not serious training. To cite a modern philosopher that some of you uh, might be able to remember just from the quote, if bodybuilding or powerlifting is like building a house, then functional fitness is the equivalent of getting really good at putting nails in a wall. And I think that it is perfectly true. Functional training is really the action of getting better at a function just for the sake of getting better at that function with no purpose behind it. And when that happens, and you then compare the results to someone who trains with a purpose, like a powerlifter, or someone who does calisthenics or street workouts, you realize that you have really nothing to show for it because the methods you followed simply did not work. And that is why, by the way, people at some point or the other specialize. It's because if you just, again, stick whole nails into the wall with no actual goal or house to build, you're never going to get anywhere. And worse, you're going to get tired of training with no actual goal. And this is sort of the paradox of functional training. It's that its accessibility is also its greatest flaw because at some point you're going to have to specialize if you want to stick to it and if you want to stay engaged, which will eventually mean getting better at that very thing that you're going to specialize in, which will then take you away from quote unquote functional training, which in reality means nothing. It just means that you're going to zero in on a specific function. And that's exactly how CrossFit got so popular. By devising engaging training sessions that are both fun and challenging, it keeps people wanting to show up to class because they can see their numbers go up and they can see that they're becoming better and bigger. Does that mean that battle rope deadlift supersets, which some people might make fun of, are actually functional? 
No, and yet I think no one would tell me that CrossFit is not functional. Or if someone were to make that point, it would be me because I would argue that anything you do in the gym is functional as long as it aligns with your goal. And David is actually a good example of that. I'm not saying by that that he has no purpose or that he sucks. He sucks at strength and size, but that's not what he wants. What David wants is mobility and flexibility. And from what I've seen, he is really, really good at both of these traits. And you see that with the exercises he does. Even when he lifts with barbells, he uses very light weight with lots of range of motion to so as to stretch the muscle under load. And that seems to work beautifully for him. Even though I still need to point out that none of these things are actually applicable in real life, unless you're going to tell me that your ability to do the splits has a function in real life, you're going to impress people at parties that's functional to a certain degree, but it's not going to save your life. Likewise, being able to touch your feet, it's an obsession of people for some reason to have flexible arm swings. I have a fat ass. I'm not flexible in many aspects, but I can put my hand fully on the floor. I've always been able to do that and I've had to train for it. I don't really see how this is relevant or even functional because it has never served me. Getting stronger at prominent deadlifts has served me. It gave me better arm strings, bigger arm strings and glutes, and also it made me stronger at the function. And again, I say that not to shoot down his style of training. I'm just saying that Flexibility, just like anything else, only exists for its own sake, unless you have a direct application for it in the form of a sport, for example, or a job, if you're like a firefighter, then yes, maybe some of these things could be useful. But 99% of the human population cannot apply these things in that fashion. So you train for the sake of training and that is fine. And I say it's fine because if David had never decided to specialize in mobility, chances are he wouldn't be as flexible as he is today. That is the nature of training, right? We train to become better at something. And he himself calls what he does mobility and flexibility training. So I don't think I'm being unfair here. And again, that's great if that's what he likes. But something tells me that the bulk of his audience didn't begin their fitness journey for that reason. Most of his audience are teenagers who also follow other pages that tend to be bodybuilding or aesthetic centered. So how exactly did they end up there and why exactly are they staying there if their goal at the start was to get stronger or to get bigger? Well, we now get to the reason why I even made the video in the first place and my issue with functional training channels. The reason why these people stay is because despite David knowing very little about strength or hypertrophy training, he still regularly peppers his videos with information regarding these two things, even though he knows nothing about it. And this has always been my issue. When people don't stay in their lane when it comes to fitness, it always ends horribly because of the law of specialization. When you go down a path of a special type of function you want to fulfill, you tend to become really good at that function and bad at the rest because you can't be good at everything. So in a perfect world, everyone would be giving advice regarding what they know best and what they do, and we would let other people deal with what they deal. Imagine if tomorrow I started to give MMA advice. You would tell me, dude, you're a bodybuilder, you don't know how to fight, shut the fuck up. And I'd be like, yeah, you're right, I should shut the fuck up. But for some reason, when people who have functional channels do it, it's fine because they have like a general understanding of everything, I guess. So it leads to advice, for example, like saying that six packs are built by dieting, but a useful six pack is built by doing difficult things. So essentially, bodybuilders have six packs because they starve themselves, I guess. It's not the training. Thanks, dude, for keeping myths alive that people like me within the natural community have been trying to kill for like three, four years now. Abs are trained in the gym. They are grown in the gym. We do difficult things. We do weighted sit-ups. We do windshield wipers. These are very difficult movements. That is how you grow. So not only is that information untrue, but it also presents bodybuilding as a subpar version of training because it's not functional. And he doesn't stop there. He also gives advice on how to develop strength. So I saw videos about grip strength, for example. I would be very curious to see how much you can actually grip, because again, if you're going to give advice on something, you better possess that quality. I think it's only fair. If I taught you how to run, I don't know, like a 10 second 100 meter dash, I should be able to do that, or at least have coached people who can do that, or have been able to do that in the past. And surprisingly, this leads to his video being fairly bad. I mean, from what I know about grip strength, from people who play grip sports, or strongmen, or even arm wrestlers, 
the advice that he gives is actually quite subpar. And that is not surprising is because it's not his area of expertise. So what he's doing essentially here is that he's diluting the quality of information that should be available by trying to do everything at once. And again, it's not surprising because that's every time what functional channels do. They start by being Mr. Everything. They can do everything. They know everything. They can get you big. They can get you strong. They can get you faster. They can make you fight harder. All of which is most times a lie, meaning that their advice is not good. But I think the worst about the entire affair is the hypocrisy behind it because the guy in the same breath will tell you that you should train for whatever makes you happy. But at the same time, he actively discourages his audience to train for aesthetics because he constantly presents it as dysfunctional by comparing it to functional training. And he also goes out of his way to give advice in that same fashion for bodybuilding. Because keep in mind that if you tell people, hey, if you want a strong and functional six pack, do this and not this, then by elimination, these people are going to look at the thing you say doesn't work and are going to take it and toss it in the garbage. Because again, the idea that you can have a pretty six pack without developing the function of the ab is entirely fallacious. And don't get me started again on the strength thing. I don't think that someone who can barely do a few body weight movements at 140 can claim to be strong. You can claim to be stronger than the average person, but that's not being strong. And this is why I dislike functional fitness and functional training in general. It's because it constantly borrows from other aspects of fitness, like bodybuilding or strength training, to get popular, only to then turn around and shit on these things as dysfunctional because they're not general, general enough. Yeah, they're not general enough because if we were to stay general, we would give shit advice like you guys. We have to specialize to be able to actually zero down and narrow down the amount of advice we give. And this betrayal is made even worse by the fact that these very same channel still rely on methods that are perfectly aligned with aesthetics to get people to click. So for example, if you check out any big functional fitness channel on YouTube, they always have shirtless pictures in their thumbnails. But I thought you were only there for function. What happened? Why do you show off your six pack? Is it maybe because you know it's going to get people in? What type of people are going to be attracted by that? People who want to look better and then they're stuck with what? Garbage advice. Garbage advice because these people don't care for bodybuilding, but they still use bodybuilding thumbnails. So are we then surprised that we have a generation of bodybuilders who are not jacked and who think that it's impossible to get big naturally? When you see the type of advice they receive, is it really a surprise? And keep in mind that this entire thing, this entire fiasco is a beast repetita of what happened with powerlifting 10 fucking years ago. Powerlifting got into YouTube, started getting massively popular because they built themselves in opposition to bodybuilding training by trashing bodybuilding, saying, oh, it's fluff and pump, it's nonsense, it's not actual training, it's fake muscles, whatever that fucking means. And we see the results now. I've been spending the entirety of my stay on this platform trying to destroy and deconstruct all of the nonsense that was put in people's heads regarding bodybuilding training because everyone was using parameters of powerlifting applied to aesthetics and hypertrophy and it simply did not work. How many people lost years of their training journey because they followed methods that didn't work, pushed and sold to them by people who offered a better alternative? And the worst is that it ends up also working because it speaks to people's insecurity. I spent some time in this David guy comment section. It's a bunch of skinny dudes who are like in their early teens who've decided that everyone who's big must be on PEDs and that therefore the only real way to train as a natural lifter is to train for function. And it of course infuriates me as a natural bodybuilder because it's nonsense. But worse than that, it makes me sad because now Instead of choosing something that would challenge them and actually make them feel more confident because they would have the ability to build up their body and realize that no, actually, you don't have to stay skinny. Anyone can become big and jacked if they put in the work and they do proper bodybuilding training. Instead, they'll stick to something that is going to keep them in their comfort zone and therefore mediocre forever because functional training is only really the first steps of your journey meaning that you should not be stopping there. You should try to find the thing that makes you happy and that would then lead naturally to specialization. And keep in mind one thing also, because I know that some people still have this idea in their head that bodybuilding is vain and therefore it's morally bad to pursue bodybuilding. 
all purposes for training are vain. You're not, you're not an avenger, you're not training to save people, you're not a firefighter, you're not a, a policeman or a military member. You are training because you want to become a better person, which means that all purposes for training are vain because they all boil down to the same thing, which is self-improvement. And there's never been anything wrong with that. Be it getting bigger biceps, a bigger bench or more mobile legs, it doesn't matter because it all boils down to ego. So you better actually try to pursue something that is going to satisfy your ego because if you do something else for the sake of what society believes or your own delusions, that's never going to fulfill you. You're going to end up very bitter down the line. And I know many guys like this, having been on this platform for a long ass time, people who have been training for function, for strength, for things that they don't give a fuck about for years because they thought that this was the virtuous route. And then they sit around and they realize, shit, I don't actually give a fuck about any of this stuff. Why did I waste my time? But when you're in that predicament, it's very tough to swallow that pill and realize that, yeah, you fucked up. So let's do away with the entire functional fitness dogma. As I've demonstrated, it's stupid because every type of training is functional. The only difference is the intent you put in it. So it would be really stupid to put an effort into something that you don't really care about just because you bought into the idea that the area of fitness you really want to get good at is somehow inferior. And that goes again for everything. Some people make fun of strong men because, oh, they're fat. Yeah, they can also overpress your house and then dump it on you. If that's what you want in life, fucking do strong men. Don't listen to people. And if you are someone who watches David, you could tell me rightfully that that's exactly what David says. David says in his videos that you should train for what makes you happy. The problem is that he says one thing and then in his videos, he does the exact opposite. Again, I don't blame him. It's because it's the way to get popular, to do everything, to be a generalist. But what I'm trying to tell you right now is that the happiness of content creators rarely aligns with the happiness of the followers. So if the thing that makes you happy in life and that got you into fitness is aesthetic, then that is the function you must seek. And to that end, you would do well actually seeking out teachers who are good at that one thing instead of teachers who are good at everything because most of the time they're actually not good at everything at all. And I'm going to leave you on these words with just a short video by my standards. I'm going to see you very soon. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.